Welcome to Fast Draw 101. I'm Howard Darby. Today we have Barb Argenbright with us, one of the masters of Fast Draw holsters, the archivist for the sport, and today we're talking about the evolution of Fast Draw holsters. Shooters on the line. Shooters, set. So Bob, can you tell us about the evolution of the Fast Draw holster? Yes. Uh, the sport of Fast Draw started in the mid-1950s and came out of the adult TV westerns. And uh, a man named Arvo Ojala came to Hollywood and he felt that he had a holster design that he could teach the TV and movie stars to draw a gun faster than anyone else. And the secret of his holster was it had a steel insert. And this steel insert allowed the cylinder of the single action revolver to turn freely while it was in the holster. So he taught the stars to draw, to, to cock the gun before it ever left the holster. And this was the beginning of what was truly a fast draw. And for probably 10 years, uh, the Ojala holster dominated the sport of fast draw. It got so bad that movie directors would have a problem because everyone in their western movie had the same holster on. And so it came to where the director would tell the bad guys that they couldn't wear an Ojala rig because they looked just like the good guy. Then a man named D. Woolam, who was a stuntman at Knott's Berry Farm in California, and he was the train robber and the excursion train came through about every 20 minutes and he robbed the train. And he had a lot of downtime, so he started practicing his fast draw. And he formed the first fast draw club and put on the first fast draw contest. They actually, uh, he had the technicians there built the first electronic fast draw timer. And D felt that he could draw faster if he wore his gun higher on his hip. So he designed his own holster. And uh, he uh, went with Tandy Leather Company. And Tandy Leather offered the D. Woolam holster as a kit. And it was extremely popular in the sport because it was inexpensive. You could buy the kit, you could assemble it yourself, and it was a competitive holster. It did have a metal insert. Now there were two other major holster makers for Fast Draw who were Andy Anderson and Alfonso. And interestingly, both of them started working in the Arvo Ojala shop making Ojala holsters. And they then later opened their own shops. Um, Anderson, uh, well, Ojala only made a single style of holster. Uh, Anderson made five or six different styles and that made him popular with the movies because they could all use Anderson holsters but they didn't all look alike. And Andy Anderson is well known for inventing the walk and draw holster which uh, in the sport walk and draw became very popular. It simulated the movie gunfight where two gunfighters walk out in the street and walk towards each other and draw and fire. And the problem being that the holster tied to your leg when you walk, it's moving back and forth and it's very difficult to make a draw. So the Anderson walk and draw had a built-in hip plate that locked the holster in place on the hip without being tied to the leg. Did it move uh, as you walked? No, the holster did not move as you walked. And remember now, we were still thumb cocking the gun and that was the problem because the hammer if the holster was tied to the leg the hammer spur that you had to hit with your thumb was moving constantly and again this is the days when we weren't having the hand the thumb on the, on the hammer. yes there was a six inch hand distance rule meaning the the closest point of contact for, between the gun and the hand couldn't be less than six inches so walking draw was very difficult that's why that's what brought on fanning in our sport was that fanning was slower than thumbing but you never half cocked the gun so Anderson designed the specific holster called the walk and draw that was made just for walk and draw competition and that became very popular um, 
the there was a national championship four years known as the Las Vegas Nationals were held at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada in 1959, 60, 61, and 62. And you saw the progression of the holsters in that in 1959, everyone used an Ojala holster. In 1960, everyone used an Anderson Walk and Draw holster. By 61, we had Fanning had taken over and everyone used an Alfonso number no. two holster. Now, with the Anderson holsters, they were very popular with the TV and the uh, movie stars. Steve McQueen used Anderson leather only, and Clint Eastwood used Anderson leather only. Uh, the Virginian TV series used nothing but Anderson leather. So um, Anderson pretty much replaced Ojala. Then the next... Uh, big change was the Alfonso holster and as I mentioned Alfonso had also worked as a holster maker for Ojala originally. He opened his own shop and in one night he designed four holsters which he simply called the numbers one, two, three, and four. Uh, what Alfonso did was he added even more steel to the holsters. He raised them higher he moved them further out away from the shooter's hip and then he had instead of a tie down thong he had a wide leather strap that went around the thigh to hold the holster very securely and when the sport went from thumbing to fanning everyone went to the Alfonso holster uh, and Alfonso is the only one who is still producing holsters today. He still has a shop in Hollywood. Yes, there is a, uh, the original Alfonso passed away and his son is still producing the holsters. Now I've mentioned fanning, but there was a specialized type of fanning that took over called twisting. And in this, one actually twisted the gun sideways as they fanned it and that allowed one to get the muzzle level much quicker because of the mobility of the wrist when it's turned on its side rather than vertical. And <clears throat> with uh, twisting, we saw very specialized holsters just for it. And uh, one of our shooters, who was one of the fastest in the sport, named Ernie Hill, started making holsters because he wasn't happy with what was available for him personally. And for uh, quite a number of years, uh, the Ernie Hill holster dominated the sport if you wanted to twist. 24, 3, and 45 flat. Uh, and Ernie's uh, uh, holsters, uh, they set further away than the Alfonso. They wore them around more to the front of their thigh which allowed the, the draw to actually be a little easier. And um, the holster rules of the different uh, fast draw organizations evolved to where less and less of the gun had to be covered by the holster. And so they became very low cut in the front. And uh, Ernie actually taught a draw where the shooter's arm didn't move. They strictly grabbed the gun, snapped their hip real hard, and slapped the hammer. And snapping the hip actually popped the gun out of the, the skimpy little holster. Over the years, there were several different uh, organizations that governed the sport of fast draw. And uh, uh, with the twist draw and the Ernie Hill rigs, things became so wild that we came up with what was called traditional fast draw and we uh, separated uh, what we felt was more the movie style of fast draw from twisting and you could do either or both but with this we we came back to more uh, traditional uh, fast draw holsters and uh, another shooter Bob Mernickel uh, started manufacturing holsters and uh, probably one of the most popular holsters in the sport today is the Mernicle FD7. 
Now the FD7 is uh, a holster that one could twist out of, but it looks much more like the Anderson and Alfonso holsters did, and it is an extremely competitive holster today. In addition to that, uh, there is a relatively new segment of fast draw called cowboy fast draw. Now in cowboy fast draw, uh, there is only a single event, a single target. Everyone must shoot a 45 caliber single action revolver. It's a, you, one is allowed to fan, but it's very difficult to fan, so almost everyone thumbs. And the major difference in the fast draw holsters is you're not allowed to have a steel insert in a cowboy fast draw holster. Now they have evolved to where they look very much like the World Fast Draw Association holsters, but they cover much more of the gun. And rather than steel, they have a hardened rawhide insert, which makes them almost as stiff as steel, still allows one to cock the, holster, the gun while it is in the holster. And with Cowboy Fast Draw, they've uh, put limits on what the holster can look like and how it, the style of it, correct? Yes. The, in Cowboy Fast Draw, they wanted the holster to look like an 1880s cowboy holster. So the one thing I didn't mention was starting with the Ojala, the holster style was what is called a buscadero. Now a buscadero, the gun belt, has a slot in the bottom edge of the belt and the holster passes through that slot. Now Cowboy Fast Draw does not allow a Buscadero holster. The well, Buscadero was not historically accurate? Yes, there, there were no Buscadero holsters in the Old West or they were extremely rare. When you say there are none then they come up with a photograph of a well-known guy who was a lawman and did have a buscadero, but it's the only known photograph. The buscadero was an early 1900s invention, and it was, but it was the standard Hollywood style in any western. Uh, but cowboy fast draw, the holster must go over the top of the belt instead of passing through a slot which is more the historically accurate. That is more historically accurate, yeah.